Hello everybody, my name is Robius and welcome to a new episode of Assassin's Creed The Real History. In this series, I compare events in a selected character's life within one of the Assassin's Creed games to the actual history the individual lived through. As always, be aware of major story spoilers. For today's episode, we will be taking a look at the history of the Commander-in-Chief of the Continental Army and the first President of the United States, George Washington. As is customary, I'll begin this episode by sharing with you his pre-game history, which will inform us on his background prior to AC3, then his in-game history, which we see depicted in the game, and lastly we will analyze the differences between what happens in the game to the real historical events of the individual's life. Starting with the pre-game history, George Washington was born to Augustine Washington and Mae Ball on February 22, 1732 in Westmoreland County, Virginia. When he was young, Washington's family was considered middle class as his father was a tobacco planter who also dabbled in iron mining. At the age of 11, George's father died, and the young boy inherited his property of Ferry Farm, with his half-brother Lawrence Washington becoming his new role model. In reason of his father's passing, George was unable to continue his education by attending the Appleby School in England, and was instead given an equivalent education from various tutors in America. Thanks to Lawrence, he was made the official surveyor for Culpeper County, and received a good wage, which helped him purchase his own land. In 1751, George and Lawrence went to Barbados with the hope of aiding the latter's tuberculosis. Unfortunately, they were unsuccessful, and during their trip, George actually contracted smallpox, which he survived. They returned home, and in 1752, Lawrence died, with George inheriting his plantation of Mount Vernon, which was named after his brother's commanding officer, Admiral Edward Vernon, along with his position as the militia leader of Virginia. Washington joined the Freemasons Fraternal Association around this time and was given the rank of Major in the Virginia Militia in 1753. Later that year, Washington was given the duty by his government of telling the French to remove their presence from the Ohio Valley. On his trip, he met multiple Iroquois chiefs and made alliances with them to gain their support of the British in case of a military confrontation. He then met with the French commander, Jacques Le Gardet de Saint-Pierre, who refused to leave. Washington kept track of these events in his diary, which was later published and made him rather famous in Virginia, allowing him to establish his own company of 100 men. His next military task was to defend the construction site of a fort in Pennsylvania. However, before arriving, the French pushed out the colonials and started building their fort to Cain. In May of 1754, with the help of his native allies, Washington and his militia ambushed the French, who were under the command of Joseph Coulon de Jumonville. After a short battle, the French leader was killed, and most of his men were either captured or killed during the fighting. In reason of this, Washington was later attacked and captured by the French in July at Fort Necessity. He was later, however, allowed to return with his troops to Virginia. Unfortunately, at this point in time, the French and Indian War was already in effect as the American theater for the worldwide conflict which was the Seven Years' War. In 1755, Washington participated as a senior American aide during General Edward Braddock's expedition to the colonies with the goal of removing the French. During the Battle of the Monongahela, Braddock was mortally wounded and the British were defeated by the French and their native allies, while Washington simply tried to keep their forces organized as they retreated. For this, among his other actions, Washington was made the Colonel of the Virginia Regiment and the Commander-in-Chief of the Virginian Colony. In his new position, he led thousands of soldiers, and during a period of 10 months, they fought over 20 brutal battles, losing a third of their men. However, for this sacrifice, Virginia's population suffered less than those of other colonies during this conflict. An embarrassing confrontation, however, was when Washington's troops and those of another British unit fired at each other, thinking that they were each the French, which led to minor casualties. Eventually, they expelled the French from the Ohio Valley, and Washington retired from his military life in 1758. Although this ended his participation in military affairs for the time being, despite not having earned a commission in the British Army, Washington had learned much about their leadership, their political methods, and their military tactics, most of which would become invaluable assets later in his life. In 1759, he married Martha Dandridge Custis, and together they raised her two children from a previous marriage once they moved to Mount Vernon. Here, George worked as a planter and participated in politics, eventually becoming one of the richest men in Virginia. His property increased massively, as did their slave population. As his social importance grew, in 1769 he participated in politics further, presenting to the Virginia Assembly a legislation to ban the importation of products from Great Britain, so as to improve their economy. In 1765, Washington opposed the Stamp Act, and in 1767, the Townshend Act, as he played a larger role in colonial resistance to these laws. In 1769, he proposed a boycott of English goods until the acts were repealed. However, following the passing of the Intolerable Acts, he commented that the British were invading their rights to privileges. In 1774, Washington was selected as Virginia's delegate to the First Continental Congress. Following years of military retirement, after the battles of Lexington and Concord, Washington arrived at the Second Continental Congress to offer his services for the Continental Forces. It could technically be considered that it was around this time when we first met Washington in Assassin's Creed III as Connor, however he was quickly depicted earlier in the game during the Braddock expedition while playing as Haytham. 
In June of 1775, Congress created the Continental Army and George Washington was elected as their general and commander-in-chief, to which he offered his speech, explaining that he did not find himself equal to the position. In this new post, Washington had three major roles. First, he was to lead his forces against the British in battle. Secondly, he was to organize, train, and recruit their army, for which he had the help of Baron von Stoben. And thirdly, he was to act as the symbol of resistance and revolution against the crown. Washington took command of his troops in Cambridge, Massachusetts in July of 1775 during the Siege of Boston. After ordering raids of British arsenals, and with the help of the French, they gathered just enough gunpowder to properly utilize their artillery at Dorchester Heights, which forced the British to evacuate the city in March of 1776. In August of the same year, Washington led the now officially independent United States Continental Army against the forces of General William Howe in the Battle of Long Island. During this largest conflict of the entire war, the Americans were greatly outnumbered and were beaten, forcing their general to call for a retreat across the East River. The British captured Fort Washington, and the Patriots retreated past New Jersey, losing many men to desertion and seeing enlistment numbers dropping. However, in December, the general led his army across the Delaware River, where they captured around 1,000 Hessians in Trenton, and then defeated the British troops at Princeton in January. The English returned to New York City, which they occupied until 1783, but in this time, Washington and Congress changed the structure of the Continental Army by increasing punishment for deserters and the rewards for service. Evidently, this raised the number of troops in the Patriots' army. In 1777, the British both sent an invading force from Quebec to attack New England and sent the army of General Howe to strike at Philadelphia. Washington tried to oppose Howe, but after fighting multiple difficult battles, the Americans were defeated, ultimately at the Battle of Brandywine, which allowed the British to enter the capital of Philadelphia unopposed. However, the invading force from Quebec was trapped and forced to surrender at Saratoga. This in turn led the French to officially ally with America against the British. Washington's failure at Philadelphia almost led Congress to remove him from command. However, in reason of his large amount of supporters, this change did not occur. After a long winter, where Washington's forces were camped at Valley Forge, despite losing many men to disease, the army emerged as more efficient due to their successful training program. The British left Philadelphia and returned to New York in 1778. Washington fought them at Monmouth, which led to a draw and another massive confrontation. The segment was slightly differently represented in Assassin's Creed III, where it was only thanks to Connor's intervention that this battle was not an American failure due to the Templars' intervention. In 1779, under Washington's orders, General John Sullivan initiated a scorched earth campaign where they destroyed at least 40 Iroquois villages that were seen as British allies. This segment too was well represented in AC3 where Connor learned that his village was going to be attacked by Washington's forces. Historically, with the help of the French in the form of the Comte de Rochambeau and his 5,000 troops, along with further funds, Washington defeated the British in 1781 after a naval attack allowed the Patriots to trap the British army in Virginia. Their surrender at Yorktown on October 19, 1781 was the official end of the major confrontations during the Revolutionary War. Following a period of unrest where the Americans were left by their French allies and were unsure if the British would reopen hostilities, the Treaty of Paris was signed on September 3, 1783, and had the British recognize the independence of the United States. Washington then disbanded his army and offered a farewell to his soldiers. On December 23, 1783, he resigned as Commander-in-Chief of the Continental Army, for which he was referred to by King George III of England as the greatest character of the age. The former general retired to Mount Vernon shortly, where he went to court to solidify the ownership of his lands, some of which had been contested during his leave. He was then asked to attend the Constitutional Convention in Philadelphia in 1787, where he was unanimously elected President of the Convention. Through his support, the Constitution was ratified by all 13 states. In 1789, the Electoral College elected George Washington, once again unanimously, as the first president, and again in 1792. John Adams was made his vice president, and to this day, Washington remains the only president to have received a 100% electoral vote. Congress offered him a large salary, which he initially refused since he was already rich, however he did agree to take it once they decided this would not set a precedent which would limit the presidency to only rich individuals who would not need a salary. Washington did his best to separate their new form of government from the European royal courts, including his preference to be called Mr. President. The man was a very efficient administrator and set most of the precedents for the working of the presidency, which have since become part of the tradition. This included the time where he reluctantly accepted to serve a second term, but refused to serve a third, which set an example for most of his future successors. Interestingly enough, Washington was not a member of any party, and hoped that there would not be any created, since it might undermine the republicanism on which the country was founded upon. Following the Residence Act of 1790, Washington decided that the permanent seat of government would be located along the Potomac River, which he oversaw through his term. In 1791, it was officially named the City of Washington in the Territory of Columbia to honor their president. As a note, it was changed to the District of Columbia in 1800. 
The first time this new government was challenged was between 1791 and 1794, where the Whiskey Rebellion took place when protesters opposed the new taxes and it escalated into a full-scale defiance. Washington used the Militia Act to summon troops from various states, which he led into the rebelling areas. There was no conflict and the protesters dispersed as the government proved itself capable of defending its laws. Washington was again tested during the events of the French Revolution as their former allies asked for American assistance against the British. However, their president proclaimed that they would remain neutral. In 1796, George Washington's farewell address was issued as a public letter. Here he shared many political opinions and gave warnings to things which may challenge their new government. It is still considered one of the most influential statements about republicanism. In March of 1797, Washington retired from the presidency and returned to his home in Mount Vernon. Although he tried to separate himself from political affairs, by 1798 it seemed as though the Americans might go to war against France, and so Washington took the position of Lieutenant General and Commander-in-Chief, which was given to him by President Adams, in the case that there was a war. On December 13, 1799, Washington grew ill while working on his plantation. The next day he had difficulty breathing, speaking, and swallowing. Three physicians came to his aid and performed bloodletting procedures, hoping the removal of the blood would improve his condition. After a few hours where the physicians tried their treatments, Washington had lost a lot of blood. One man offered to try an emergency tracheotomy, but it was refused by the others. Around 10 p.m. on Saturday, December 14, 1799, George Washington died at the age of 67. In summary, there are a few differences between George Washington's actual life and his representation in Assassin's Creed III. Firstly, during the Braddock expedition, he did not initially save the British general by fighting off the fictional Haytham Kenway. Secondly, there is no recorded assassination attempt on George Washington, although certain allegations have been made that such a plot may have possibly involved the soldier Thomas Hickey without this being fully confirmed. Thirdly, Washington did not send Connor to hunt the traitor Benjamin Church. Fourthly, the Americans fighting during the Battle of Monmouth was not saved by Connor, but was instead simply a difficult draw between the Patriots and the British. Fifthly, the entire sequence with Connor's revelation concerning the betrayal of Benedict Arnold and Washington's involvement in his hunt were also fictionalized. Lastly, and I hardly think this needs mentioning, but I'll say it anyways, the entire DLC concerning the tyranny of George Washington was simply a fictional depiction of a dystopian alternate reality. Evidently, despite these differences, Washington's overall history was rather well represented, including how certain parties saw his military command as incompetent and the less than wonderful portrayal of his attacks on native villages. And with that final fact, we have finished another episode of Assassin's Creed, The Real History. I hope you all enjoyed this rather long video, and if you did, I highly recommend you try out one of the Assassin's Creed games. Thank you all for watching. Please leave any suggestions for future characters from any of the Assassin's Creed games that you'd like me to cover in the comment section below. Please rate, comment, and subscribe for more videos, and I'll see you all in a future historical episode.